Okay, these notes accompany worksheet G, 2G or 3, 4G, excuse me. Um, and so these are the problems we just got done whiteboarding, but if you want to go ahead and review them. Okay, so the very first thing you do is draw a force diagram. And I would suggest drawing a force diagram for the knot where the two strings meet one another. And in that case, <clears throat> you just have your typical coordinate system. You should always draw the forces that are at an angle to your coordinate system first. So I'll start with the tension over here. I'll call that tension two, tension on object from cable two. And then you would draw the X and Y coordinate vectors. And since this is just suspended there, it must be in equilibrium, so it must be balanced. So I'm gonna have the X um, component vector balanced out the other tension. Since it's the same angle, it would be um, very similar looking to the other side. This would be the tension on the object from cable one. The two dashed red lines, the Y components of both of the tensions, add together to balance out the weight. Then we write our two equations, T1Y plus T2Y equals the weight. That's the two red component vectors, balance out the weight. And T1X equals T2X. That's the two blue component vectors. They balance out one another. The Y component is given by the sine of the angle. So T1 sine 30 plus T2 sine 30 equals 25. And for the X equation, it'd be T1 cosine 30 equals T2 cosine 30. Again, the reason why we use cosine for the X and sine for the Y is because the angle 30 degrees, in this case, if you look at the picture, is me measured relative to the X axis. Given that T1 cosine 30 equals T2 cosine 30, you can divide both sides by cosine 30, therefore T1 equals T2. We can then make a substitution into the um, vertical equation, and I would have 2T1 times sine 30 equals 25, therefore T1 and T2 both must be 25. If we um, repeat this problem again for part B, and assume the angles are five degrees. All the physics would be the same, so we can jump down to the second to the last statement there and replace 30 degrees with five degrees. Solve this and we get tension one and tension two is 143 degrees. So we, or 143 newtons, excuse me. So we can see that as the angles get closer and closer to zero degrees, the force gets bigger and bigger. Okay, here's another example. That, that um, angle up there, sorry about that, is supposed to be 30 degrees. Okay, again, we draw a force diagram. I would suggest drawing a force diagram for the knot um, because we're trying to find the tensions in the cables. So I would draw a normal coordinate system, just like you'd use a math class. Um, draw the tension T2 first because it's at an angle to the um, coordinate system. And um, I'm going to call this tension on the knot from cable two. And um, the X component vector balances out the tension on the knot from cable one. And the vertical component vector of tension two balances out the tension three that's down towards the weight. Then I can go ahead and write my two equations. T2Y would be equal to T3, and T1 is equal to T2X. In this case, notice the angle is measured with respect to the vertical axis. So therefore, to find the Y component, you'd have to use cosine, and to find the X component, you'd have to use sine. So we have T2 cosine 30 equals T3, and they give us the tension T1 is 30 newtons, so that means 30 newtons is equal to T2 sine 30. Solve for T2, and we get T2 is 60 newtons. Plug that into the vertical equation, and we get T3 is equal to 52 newtons. 
Part C wants to know what is the gravitational force acting on the ball? So I'm not gonna draw the force diagram for the ball, but that should be a fairly easy force diagram because there'd only be two forces, a tension upward, which happens to be tension three, and a weight downward that have to be balanced. We just found tension three is 52 Newtons. Therefore, the gravitational force, the weight, must also be 52 Newtons. Here we have an object that's suspended on a ramp. It's just sitting there. So again, we need to draw a force diagram. For this one, we need to rotate the coordinate system. The reason for that is that the normal force, normal means perpendicular, is going to be perpendicular to the ramp surface. So we have to rotate the coordinate system so that the normal fits along the y-axis nicely. So there it's rotated. Notice the x-axis is parallel to the ramp surface. The only force that will not fit into uh, this coordinate system nicely is the weight. In other words, it will be at an angle to the x and y axis. So that's the one we draw first. And that's straight down towards the center of the earth. Then we go ahead and break this in, up into the x and y um, component vectors. When you do this, be sure that the weight vector, in my case, the, the black uh, arrow, is always the hypotenuse of this right triangle. Got to be careful about that. Again, this is balanced. So that means that the blue um, Y component of the weight has to be equal to the normal. And the red X component of the weight must be equal to the tension force. So those are my two equations. Tension is equal to the X component of the weight and the normal is equal to the Y component of the weight. The angle 30 degrees that's given to us is the opposite uh, angle to the red uh, dashed line. So the X component vector is given by sine. So tension is equal to the weight times the sine of 30. And again, that angle is 30 degrees is adjacent to the blue dashed line. So if I wanna find the Y component vector, that would be the weight times cosine of 30. That's equal to the normal. We know what the mass of the box is, it's 20 newtons, or 20 kilograms, excuse me. So we could find the weight by multiplying by 10 newtons per kilogram, and we get 200 newtons, plug that in, and then just simply solve for the tension in the normal, and we get 100 newtons for the tension and 173 newtons for the normal. Notice that normal, which is a support force, is less than the weight of the box. So as that angle gets more and more, the normal force, the support force is less and less. The ramp is supporting the box less and less. Makes sense. Okay, for this one, we're pulling this box across a flat surface. So um, we're just gonna use a typical coordinate system like you would use in math class. It's going at a constant speed. So I don't need to flip my X axis or anything. The uh, force that is an angle to the X and Y axis would be the tension force, so I'd draw that first. Break that up into the X and Y component vectors. The X component vector, which is the blue dashed line, is gonna be balanced by friction because it says constant speed. And the Y component vector, which is the red, will add to the normal to balance out the weight. Notice the normal does not have to be the same size as the red dashed line, okay? But the red dashed line and the normal add together to balance out the weight. So those are my two equations then. The tension Y component plus the normal is equal to the weight and the X component of tension is equal to the friction. Since the angle 30 degrees is measured with respect to the X axis, <clears throat> to find the Y component, we use sine, and to find the X component, we use cosine. It tells us what the tension force is. It says 200 Newtons. And it tells us what the mass is. It's 50 kilograms, so therefore the, the weight would be 500 Newtons. Plugging in the tension, we have 200 sine of 30 plus the normal equals 500. And 
we have the x component of tension, which is 200 cosine 30, is equal to the friction. Solving this uh, for the friction, we get 173 newtons. I just realized now, I'm not sure if you can see this, the second equation down for the x direction, it says TBRx equals the friction. That first equation is good. The second equation, though, should not be TBRx. It should be TBR times cosine 30. So drop that x there because the x component is given by TBR times cosine 30. Solving for the normal, subtracting 100, we get 400 newtons for the normal force. Uh, for part C, it says if the man were to drop the rope, I didn't draw this force diagram, but if you drop the rope, what happens is the normal has to balance out the weight, so the normal gets longer. The tension, of course, drops off. You still have friction because this thing, <clears throat> this thing was moving at constant speed, so it still has an initial velocity. So what will happen is because it's an unbalanced balanced force diagram, you have normal weight and friction to the right, and it's moving to the left, it would start to slow down. Okay, in this situation, again, we're on this flat surface, so we just use a typical coordinate system. The uh, force that is an angle to either the x or y axis would be that push force that's kind of downward and to the right. I just call it F force. And you should break that up into the x and y component vectors. Again, this is going to have to balance, so therefore there must be friction because it says it's going at a constant speed. So the x component vector, that's the blue dashed line, has got to balance out the kinetic friction on the broom. In this case, the red dashed line plus the weight vector are going to balance out the normal. So in this case, the normal is actually larger than the weight because the y component vector, the red dashed line of the push force, plus the weight balance out the normal. Those are my two equations. The y component of the push plus the weight equals the normal, and the x component of the push equals the friction. Um, since the angle, again, is measured with respect to the floor, which is the x-axis, um, the y component vector is given by sine, and the x component vector is given by cosine. It tells us what the mass is. It's two kilograms, so therefore the weight is 20 newtons. It also tells us what the push is. It's five newtons, so we can plug that in. We have five sine of 50 plus 20 equals the normal, and five cosine 50 equals the kinetic friction. And then we can go ahead and solve these. We get 3.2 newtons of kinetic friction, and we get 23.8 newtons of, uh, for the normal force. If the frictional, for part C, I didn't answer this one, so we're just going to answer it together. If the frictional force were suddenly reduced to zero, what would happen to the broom? Well, in that case, if the friction force drops off, you would have an unbalanced force. Vertically, it's balanced, but horizontally, it's not balanced. The X component of the push would be unbalanced, and so it would start to accelerate to the right. Uh, in this situation, we're trying to figure out what the tensions in the rope are. So I would suggest drawing a force diagram for the knot, where those tensions for those strings where they meet at. And so again, just use a typical coordinate system. The force that doesn't uh, lie along either the x or y axis, in other words, in, at an angle to those axes, would be the tension too. So I draw that one first and go ahead and draw the x and y component vectors. Again, it's not going anywhere, it's at rest, so therefore it must be balanced. The x component vector is going to balance out the tension one, and the y component vector has to balance out the tension, I'm going to call it tension three, that's the one down to the circle. Those would be my two equations. Oh, by the way, the tension three is going to be equal to the weight of the object because it's balanced. So my two equations are uh, the y component of tension 2 equals tension 3, and the x component of tension 2 equals tension 1. The angle, 30 degrees, is measured with respect to the horizontal. Therefore, 
the y component would be given by sine and the x component is given by cosine. So we could plug those two in. It tells us the weight of the ball is eight newtons. So therefore the tension is eight newtons or tension three, excuse me, 10 to three is eight newtons. We can now solve for tension two, which is 16 newtons. Plug that into the horizontal equation and we get tension one is equal to 13.9 newtons. That's per part A. Part B wants to know what is the frictional force between the block and the table? Now imagine drawing a force diagram for the block. I'm not gonna do it, just have to imagine it. Of course, it's not moving, so it must be balanced. You would have a normal force up, a weight force down. You have tension one to the right, which we just found is 13.9 newtons. We're asked to find out how much friction. Well, there must be a frictional force to the left because if it wasn't, if there was no frictional force to the left, there's nothing to balance the tension one. It's pulling to the right and it would start to accelerate, which it clearly doesn't because it says at rest. So therefore the frictional force on the block must be 13.9 newtons. And I just saw another mistake there. This says kinetic friction, that's incorrect. That static friction is not moving. Okay, last problem. So um, we're trying to figure out what the tensions and the rope are, in these ropes, I should say. So again, I would suggest drawing a uh, coordinate system such uh, for the knot, the force diagram for the knot. The coordinate system I would use would be just a regular old coordinate system because it's not on a ramp or anything like that. Uh, the two forces or the two strings that are at angles have tensions in them that are also at those same angles. So I'd draw those first. I think I'm gonna start with the one on the right and break it up into its X and Y coordinate vectors. Again, it's gonna to have to balance so the X component vector, that's the blue dashed line, is gonna balance out the other tension. And the two Y component vectors will add together to balance out the weight. Those will be my equations. So I have T1Y plus T2Y equals the weight, and T1X equals T2X. Both the angles, if you look at the picture, are measured with respect to the X axis. So therefore, if I want the horizontal part of that triangle, that's given by cosine, because it's the adjacent side. And if I want the Y component, that would be the opposite side of those angles, which would be given by sine. So I have T1 sine of 15 plus T2 sine of five equals the weight, which happens to be 90 Newtons. For the horizontal equation, I have T1 cosine 15 equals T2 cosine 15. Notice, I don't know either one of these two tensions. I have two unknowns, but that's okay, because I have two equations. So let's solve the horizontal equation for T1. T1 would be equal to T2 times cosine five over cosine 15. And let's substitute that into the vertical equation. So replacing the T1 with T2 times cosine five over cosine 15 gives the following. We can factor out a T2 and solve for T2, and that would be equal to 90 divided by the quantity cosine five divided by cosine 15 times sine of 15 plus sine of five, which can be solved on the calculator, and we get 254 newtons. Plug that back into the horizontal equation, where we have T1 equals T2 times cosine five divided by cosine 15, and we solve and get T1 to be 262 newtons. And so that's a very quick review of worksheet 4G.